<laughs> it's the morning cryptos. Ah, well, it's February 8th, and uh, we have a little green on the chart here. A little green, and uh, that could be a good thing. Let's see what's going on. Let's start the music. So yeah, a little green. Let's uh, let's see what the Bitcoin news is for today. Bull case strengthens. Bitcoin stays bid above eight thousand. I guess that's that's uh, technical language. Bitcoin Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Ripple, Stellar, blah, 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 blah. Okay, they're going to look at the prices and the charts and all that stuff, and they're going to basically say it could go up, it could go sideways, or it could go down. Let's see, ECB President Mario Draghi, European banks could hold Bitcoin in the future. This could be interesting. But I, I love how it's like CNBC is now. Bitcoin price could hit 50000 this year, like one day ago. Say experts, Right? Who owns CNBC? I think it's people that now want it to go up. I think if you just watch CNBC, you can pretty much tell what is going to happen next. Because whatever they say is going to happen. Because they they make the news. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's just see what this guy has to say. 13 minutes ago, UTB... Use the Bitcoin, your daily news about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. That must be an ad, because it blocked it. Uh, da, 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 da. This guy looks like he knows what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Important news for the cryptocurrency community arrived from the ECB. I don't know if that's an actual sentence. The president of the European Central Bank, Mario Draghi, stated on February the 5th, that European banks could hold positions in Bitcoin, notwithstanding the several comments about cryptocurrency that the ECB president has, president has given. He confirmed that European banks may have the intention to hold some positions in Bitcoin. Uh huh. Confirming the fact that banks are interested in this currency. Mm hmm. Do, do, do. Could lead position. Uh, da, da, da. Recent developments such as listing Bitcoin futures contracts by U.S. exchanges could lead European banks too to hold positions in Bitcoin, and therefore we'll certainly look at that. However, he explained there is not an increased appetite for digital Bitcoin for digital currencies like Bitcoin by European financial institutions. Huh. Why would he have to explain that? I don't know. Hmm. Furthermore, he explained that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are unregulated and are very risky investments. And the market is very volatile and price is subject to constant changes. In addition to it, cryptocurrencies are not related to a specific supervisory approach. About that, Mario Draghi said, one or two speakers touched on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Let me first say that we are not observing a systematically relevant holding of di digital currencies by supervised institutions. By banks, in other words. Supervised institutions. I love the way they say that. Supervised, as if the government supervises the banks, but we know it's the other way around. The banks supervise the government. Anyway... Actually, the credit institutions established in the European Union are showing a limited appetite for digital currencies like Bitcoin. If, here's, here's the rumor here, people, buy the rumor, sell the news, right? If banks start to hold and invest in cryptocurrencies, the market may receive an important influx of money. Bitcoin is by nature a deflationary cryptocurrency. If banks decide to invest important sums of money in this virtual currency, then this price may also experience a remarkable increase. Yeah, I don't know if that... Seem more like rumor mongering. This guy said a few vague things, and let's turn it into good news for the crypto community and that there's more money coming in. That's like, 
that's where it starts with people going, oh, and there's more money coming in, right? That's where the whole big run-up in December happened. Oh, they're going to start trading futures. Wall Street's coming in. Wall Street's coming in. We got here first, but Wall Street's coming in. If Wall Street comes in, they're not going to tell anybody. I have a feeling they're already in, and they're looking at how they can run this. That's what's really going on. So, anyway, let's look at Bitcoin price. Sometimes it's a little different than Bitcoin news. And boom, 8,529. What reasons are left to buy Bitcoin today? Bitcoin, the bottom appears to be in. Why higher prices are likely to follow? So that's the big question. All right, enough of that crap. Uh, although I should probably check out Joseph Young and see what's really going on in the world. So a lot of people think this is the bottom, okay? And uh, we have hit below the 30 on the RSI. So I'm going to take that out of here for now. Uh, we had a lot of buy volume yesterday. Now it seems like we have a little sell volume. I'm going to take that out of the picture. All right, so the question is, did Bitcoin hit its bottom? That is the big question that everybody wants to know. Is it the bottom? And the question is, could it go lower? Yeah, it could go lower. <laughs> it could. But it looks like there is life in it. Let's see what everybody else is doing here. Life in Bitcoin Cash. Nice big move back. I, by the way, <laughs> let me go back to Bitcoin Cash. There we go. This is where I got in. I bought one here and I bought one here. Right? So I'm way below. <laughs> that was... That was, you know, we thought it was going to keep going, right? And in a 2020 hindsight, it's like, after a boost like that, take a vacation. After big boosts, this is to us newbies, step the fuck back. Wait till it settles, right? Uh, and that's what I did the second time. I waited till it settled, settled, but then part of my big mistake, my big learning, and I want to share this with you guys because this is valuable. This is valuable for the future. My big learning is after taking a bunch of profits, I got to get it out of crypto into that US dollar wallet at Coinbase and then just wait. Wait till there's some really, really good opportunities to get in because I saw these opportunities. I was just already, my money was already gone. I didn't have that war chest. I didn't have that that backup fund, you know, so every time you take profits in the future, if it rises again, <laughs> if, when it rises again, you know, let's say you did get in yesterday and you decide to, to range trade and you sell today, take some money from that sale and get it out of crypto, right? Just a little bit, 10%, just pay yourself 10%. That's how I got into crypto. I started paying myself 10%, 10%, 10%. Wherever I could steal 10% for myself, I went to Coinbase with it, bought crypto. And then I was making so much with the crypto that I stopped taking 10% for myself, right? That was a mistake. I need to keep just taking 10% every day. 10% of whatever I earn, 10% of whatever I have, and pay myself first. That's, I think, one lesson. So we'll see. Um, so anyway, that was an, a little bit of a little bit of learning lesson teaching after a year of doing this um, intensely. So Bitcoin Gold, I still think we're going to see this this pump pattern return to Bitcoin Gold, and it's probably time for it. It'll probably go up to three hundred and forty, and then come back a few more times. Uh, Dash could boost. EOS coming back. Ethereum coming back, back up to 836. IOTA, we have some green. Dollar 85. Litecoin, 150 bucks. 
Neo. Neo has a lot of life in it, people. Probably would have been a good thing to get some down here. <laughs> All right. say go. We are going to have decentralized exchanges at some point, and Omi say go, I think, is going to be a big piece of that. Quantum. Uh, nice and steady, hanging tight. If I have profits in anything else, I would definitely get more quantum. But the question is, can I time it? <laughs> XMR Monero, looking like it's lively. Ripple XRP, 77 cents. I still don't know if I'd recommend it. I want to see a significant sideways pattern on Ripple before I jump in. Let's look at the one hour chart on Ripple. Because that was that was the one that really crashed. It crashed more than anything else. Yeah. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Zcash. Let's go back to the one day chart. One day chart. And the thing is, I really want to see patterns on a one-day chart. You know, I was way relying too heavily on the one-hour chart. The one-hour charts are fine if you're day trading, but if you if you're in long for a period of time, you really need to see what's going on on a one-day chart. That's my opinion. Stick to it. This is not financial advice, by the way. Any of this. Oh, excuse me. This is just me waking up every morning and going, "What the." F fuck happened while I was asleep. Uh-huh. Let me get some coffee in me and figure this shit out. What am I going to do today or not do? What thoughts do I have to think so that I can survive and thrive in these difficult times? Uh, Cardano against Bitcoin. Cardano against the U.S. dollar. Kind of stupid. Kind of not going that much, but I think I think it's a good time to buy some Cardano. I want to see if I can find some money somewhere to get me some. Uh, yeah, long-term project. I think it might be a good time to buy. So anyway, back to Bitcoin. That's it. There's lots of others I'm looking at, but at the moment, I need to just go back to basics. And uh, anytime there's a down day, I'm going to buy some some Ethereum, some Litecoin. I just don't know about Bitcoin. <clears throat> don't know, people. I don't know. I have a little bit of it. I think I bought 100 bucks recently. Uh, but time to go back to buying 20 bucks a day but I don't know if I'm want to buy 20 bucks a day of Bitcoin Litecoin yeah ethereum probably Bitcoin cash most likely but I just want stuff that I can then move over to an exchange and buy the stuff I really want to buy that's where I am right now that's what I'm thinking so that's it for today I'm gonna to keep this short I got a lot of music I'm working on my new computer arrived I gotta gonna start editing or learning how to edit uh, four cameras uh, for this concert that I did uh, November of 2016, I had uh, 10 people in my band. It was it was really the culmination of uh, 40 years of music and uh, relationships with musicians who uh, I've known for a long, long time, who are just geniuses in what they do and uh, good friends as well. So uh, that's coming. What else? I think that's it. If for some strange reason you enjoyed this watching the paint dry experiment every day, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share this with somebody who you adore. <laughs> and I'll see you tomorrow on the Morning Cryptos. Just uh, just looking. I think it's going to be okay, people. I think we're going to get through this. I think we're going to live. I think we will live to trade another day. So that's it. Bye. <laughs> Start the music!